G'day folks, how are you going? Welcome to this episode of Escaping Reality. We're still in Kununurra and um, we're going to have a quick look around town. We'll go and have a look at the irrigation system and uh, then this afternoon we're doing an amazing river cruise on the Ord River and we're going up to the Argyle Dam. So uh, stay tuned for that one. <music> Hey folks, it's another day. We've got another day here in Kununurra. We're uh, going to do a uh, river cruise on the Ord River later on this afternoon. So just before they come and pick us up, I thought we'd do a quick trip out here to um, Kelly's Knob, which you'll get a bit of a view over the top of uh, Kununurra and the surrounding area. It's quite a good view actually. But um, yeah, and then after that, we might have time to go out to have a quick look at Ivano's Crossing. Then we've got to get back because they're picking up us up in the bus to uh, take us down to the boat and then it's uh, about a six hour cruise. Cruise is probably not the right word for it. <laughs> but uh, six hours on the boat going up to the dam. Um, I've actually done that trip before. I'll put a link down below for the, the uh, video I've already got of that trip if you want to have a look at that one. Other than that, it's a pretty casual day here in Kununurra, enjoying the weather. Now, Kununurra came about because of the Ord River project. Uh, they built the dam up river, about 55 kilometres away um, at Lake Argyle. And uh, they got the deviation dam down here somewhere. I can't quite see it from up here at the moment. And that diverts the water into the M1 channel, which is that channel you can see coming out behind me. That's the main channel uh, where everybody feeds out of. So what they'll take water out of that channel into their paddocks and then from their paddocks they'll siphon it into where they want it to go when they need it to go there and that's how they water the paddocks. Now the paddocks have been uh, laser leveled by machines so that as the water goes in this end it flows downhill, comes out the other end and any water left over goes back into the main channel again. So nothing's really wasted. Because of this irrigation project, they have been able to grow pretty much almost anything. As I said before, they, uh, cane was one of the first things they were growing out here, sugar cane. Uh, but that went belly up when the price went down. Rice was a big thing out here till the uh, magpie geese came in and ate them all away. Um, and they're still doing lots of uh, different crops out here. Uh, I was actually here in the... Uh, uh, late 1970s a friend of ours had a house just down here and I came up for the school holidays I was about 13 at the time and apart from the trees getting a little bit taller Canada really hasn't changed all that much to me anyway um, but uh, great place to come to the first stage of the irrigation system spreads just behind town over the Ivano plain
So how does this all work? From the, uh, the Lake Argyle, there's the M1 channel, which is the main channel that goes through the whole thing. Then from there they've got feeder channels that run off. Now all these paddocks through here have all been laser le leveled. Um, and from the uh, feeder channels, they've got like cartwright wheels, I think that's what they call cartwright, cart, something like that, um, which measure the amount of water that the farmer actually uses very accurately. Um, then they put the, uh, the water into these channels we can see down along here, these are the irrigation channels. Um, when the farmer wants to um, water the plants, he comes along, you can see these black pipes along here, he comes along and it's, it's a siphon system, so he puts the pipe in the water, gives it a couple of pumps and the water will go over the hill and then run down into the paddocks through there go all the way through to the other end, it's all downhill. When it gets to the other end, there's another channel which collects the water and then that feeds it back into the M1 channel again. And from there, eventually, it all ends up back into the Ord River and heads down to Wyndham. So they reuse the water where they can. So if it's not used here to feed the water, it travels along through. Pretty good system and it's been working well since they started. That's the water that's come down from Lake Argyle. It's come down the uh, Ord River, through the Deviation Dam. Now it's going across Ivanhoe's Crossing. That's going across the Ivanhoe Plains, which uh, is a lot of farming out that way as well. Uh, there are crocodiles here. So saltwater crocodiles, that is. You do see people fishing over that and uh, standing in the water and that's a stupid thing to do because the crocodiles are going to get you and it has happened. Uh, from here the water runs completely down that way through to Wyndham where we saw it uh, at the uh, Three Rivers Hotel where it comes down into the, um, into the King River which then heads down into the uh, Tasman Sea I think it is. Tasman sea. Four-wheel drivers can drive across the causeway, but you do so at your own risk. That water is moving pretty quick and can push you off the road if it gets a hold. And it has happened. Just be sure of the conditions and your ability before you go. Kununurra is a pretty decent sized town, with around 7,500 people living in its boundaries, with just about all the facilities you would need for resupply before heading further up the road. There are a number of caravan parks in town, although at certain times of the year mosquitoes can be a problem for the parks on the river, and the grapevine says bats can also be an issue in some areas. Sitting here waiting for the bus now to go on the Triple J River Cruise. The Triple J River Cruise is anything but a cruise. You travel on the Ord River towards the Lake Argyle Dam, 55 kilometres upstream. On the way, the driver, skipper, captain, whatever his title is, stops in some amazing places and tells you all about the area, the wildlife and the plants. There are times when you'll travel fast at around 70 kilometres an hour, so you'll be able to skim over the shallow areas of the river. 
Then there are times where you will float with the current, while being filled with some amazing stories. There is an afternoon tea stop in a private little spot where you can get out and have a wander around for a bit, before arriving at the dam wall where you'll get the final story of the whole irrigation system. From then, it's a fast run back to Lake Kununurra to be back in time to watch the sun setting over the Diversion Dam. What better way to finish your day experiencing the Ord River? I have a video I've made up of this cruise from a previous trip, if you want to have a better look. Then hit the link up the top or in the description below. Now we've been in Kununurra here for a couple of days and we've seen and done some amazing stuff. From Kununurra we travelled an hour north, well, sort of north, um, to uh, El Cuestro, had a look around there, went for a swim in Zebedee Springs. We drove all the way up to the top of Western Australia up to Wyndham, it's only another hour and a bit away from Kununurra. Um, had a look around up there and today we did an amazing cruise on the Ord River and uh, went up to the Ord, um, Lake Argyle Dam and uh, we're actually going to do another cruise on the actual dam when we come back down again we're going to spend a couple of days up there so really looking forward to that and the sad thing is most australians will probably never have the chance to experience uh, what the top end has to offer which is a real shame anyway that's it for this video so if you liked it then uh, hit the thumbs up down there and uh, consider subscribing that really helps the channel out and uh, till next time Happy travels.